Excellent. All right, we have a slew of new modules to go through today. We'll have a few demos of these coming up. First up is a exploit for the uh, MicroWeber CMS uh, that leverages an authenticated local file inclusion vulnerability. And this was brought to us by community member Tala Tar Karaka Kamaru, and this was from PR16156. Next up uh, is the first of a couple pieces of WordPress content. Uh, this one is a modern events calendar SQL I scanner that was uh, discovered by Hacker Supreme and then contributed by Hoodie and Red Zero XFF. And this one exploits CVE 2021-24946. But that's not all WordPress content we have. We also have a WordPress secure copy content protection and content locking on authenticated SQL I. Also, I believe this was uh, identified uh, by uh, Hacker Supreme and KJet had, that was ported over into Metasploit uh, by our community member Hoodie. And this one exploits uh, CVE 2021-24931. Uh, in addition to that, we also have a couple of IP camera related vulnerabilities uh, brought to us by rapid Seven Zone Jacob Baines. First up is a vulnerability in the access IP camera application uh, that allows uh, uploads to be uh, to occur. Uh, in addition to that, we also have an unauthenticated command execution in the Hikvision IP camera. If you want to go to the next slide. All right, uh, we also have a LPE exploit uh, for Linux targeting the uh, pull kit vulnerability in the PK exec. Uh, uh, utility and this was uh, identified by Andres uh, Ragulas and it was and uh, Qualys Security and was ported over into a Metasploit uh, by Brendan Waters and Daraja Mishra and this exploit CVE 2021-4034. We're going to have a demo of this in just a little bit. In addition to that, we have a Firefox mCall git property write uh, side effects use after free uh, vulnerability. And this was uh, identified uh, by the 360 ESG Vulnerability Research Institute uh, with this POC by Maxploit and ported over into Metasploit by uh, community member Tim Wright. And this exploited CVE 2020-26950. Uh, always interesting and get new browser exploits. Uh, we also have a Microsoft Exchange Server RCE uh, that leverages a typo in a deny list that allows a deserialization gadget to be submitted. Uh, this was identified the, by the Microsoft Research Security Team, Microsoft uh, Threat Intelligence Center, uh, Peter Jason, uh, Pwn4SP, uh, Testinol, and ZCGONVH uh, exploiting CVE 2021-42321 and supported over into Metasploit by Grant Wilcox and I believe we will have a demo of that as well. Uh, finally, I myself uh, added in a Win32K LPE targeting CVE 2022-21882 which is a patch bypass for a previous CVE that came out last year. We'll have a demo of that as well. Uh, just a couple of uh, enhancements, uh, writing off all that module content. Uh, we have added support to retrieve user lists uh, from WP JSON endpoint in the WordPress uh, scanner module. This was added by a community member, SHOXXDJ. And uh, community member, Tim Wright, uh, fixed decrypting passwords on newer versions of Chrome uh, greater than 80. And we also have a couple of bugs that were fixed. Uh, we have uh, the URL references in uh, many modules and the tool used to update that uh, was uh, fixed up by community member Hoodie. Uh, Alan uh, David Foster also fixed up the um, interpreter module tests on Windows. Uh, Brendan Water updated the Metasploit payloads gem to 2.0.75, which I believe it also included a test. Uh, I myself fixed a issue where uh, payload sizes were not being validated uh, when encoding was not taking place. Uh, community member B. Coles fixed a APK uh, tool version check that was being reported by some of our community members. And our own Alan David Foster also fixed a Python interpreter race condition that was occurring when executing some subcommands. Uh, we have a couple more uh, bugs that were also fixed. Uh, the Shodan search uh, default user agent uh, was causing some issues that was being reported by community members, and that was fixed by community member Hader. In addition to that, we also have uh, Metasploit update, uh, payloads was updated again, this time pulling in a fix for the Kiwi command arguments uh, that Tim Wright uh, submitted to us. Uh, we also had another APK tool related patch that was committed by uh, B. Coles. And uh, Brendan Waters also fixed a rescue uh, for failed authentication uh, issue in info D that was occurring when the GitHub token that was specified was incorrect. And then a community member Smashery fixed a bug in the tab completion of directories. 
So I want to give a huge thanks to all of the uh, community members uh, that submitted content, bug fixes, and features and enhancements uh, that made the past two releases uh, great. Uh, so thank you. Huge thank you to all of them. And uh, as always, if you're interested in checking out the latest and greatest with Metasploit, we submit the or uh, release the weekly wrap up every Friday at blog.rapid7.com. That leads us right into the demo section. Uh, I will be kicking us off with uh, the CVE 2022-21882, which is that Win32K exploit. And we can go ahead and check this out. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, this was a patch bypass for a, a previous uh, vulnerability that we also had an exploit for. And so we combined the two modules so that way users can leverage the same vulnerability uh, without needing to worry about which version of Windows, um, that, which will be automatically uh, detected and identified. Uh, so the patch bypass uses a different technique to go ahead and corrupt the target window that is then used uh, to trigger the vulnerability and ultimately elevate privileges by swapping out the token. So the unified exploit covers uh, Windows 10 versions 18.03 through 21H2. And so our target was on a 21H2 system. Uh, so we were previously just showing that we couldn't escalate to NT authority system. And then when we ran the exploit, we go ahead and get a new NT authority system shell. And again, this was on a uh, Windows 10 21H2 system. So relatively new. Any questions on that? Okay, cool. Thanks, everyone. With that, I will pass it over to Brendan. Sure. So this was uh, sent in by Tim Wright, I believe. Uh, this is a use after free for Firefox. It The actual CVE works for... Uh, there was a quick uh, difficulty in porting this over for versions 80, 81 and 82. So this only works for 79 and below. So in this particular case, we're just setting up the normal stuff that we have for a browser exploit, the server host, the URI path. Now we've got the listener running. This uh, exploit can sometimes give a little hiccup. And when I was recording this, it did just that. You can see we, get, we, uh, we visit the website, we correctly identify everything that's going on, but in the background, the exploit did not kick off. So in just a second, I'll go ahead and revisit. We've now hit it again. This time the exploit worked. We send up our stage. We get our uh, session opened. Let's go interact with the session. And we are running uh, as the actual user. In this case, uh, we needed to launch Firefox outside the sandbox. This doesn't have the sandbox escape in it. So it's going to be a, a a very specialized set, maybe inside a DevOps environment. But there you go. Questions? OK. Uh, this exploit, I'll get, I guess I'll keep going. Uh, I had a lot of fun working with root up on this exploit. Uh, this exploit is. Uh, Another architecture independent uh, local privilege escalation for uh, Linux systems. Uh, there's two really good write-ups in AKB, uh, one by Jacob, one by me. Uh, I think it's a really good write-up, but uh, if you really want to know the nuts and bolts to this, um, but there's a, a coding mistake in uh, PK exec, which is part of poll kit. And by abusing that and being able to corrupt the stack through the use of a function call within PK exec itself, uh, we can actually go ahead and do a privilege escalation to root. Uh, this is a very, very common uh, thing to have in uh, Linux. It's across multiple platforms and fairly recent. In this case, uh, I'm running this exploit on an ARCH64 machine. Uh, notice we've got the payload down here at the bottom for ARCH64. Uh, the check for this relies on actually running the exploit itself because the versions are a little bit tough to track down. Uh, inside the documentation, you can find all of the versions that are vulnerable. 
but it's a little bit hard to verify them on the fly because the version naming is uh, non-canonical. Um, so here we go, run through, running the exploit, we do the check. In this case, it works. One other thing I will mention is most of the POCs for this exploit rely on compiling on target with some help from Spencer. We were able to do this with a Python script rather than having to exploit on target. So our version, you won't need to have uh, GCC installed on the target. Uh, we get our session. One catch with this is the directory gets deleted out from underneath us. So all we have to do is do a quick CD uh, to an existing directory and then our commands work and we get root. Questions? An interesting piece of information to add here, um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux commonly comes with this tool installed. So there are a lot of enterprise environments where this might've been useful. Yes, uh, this does, uh, it's present on Red Hat and there's a whole write-up on the versions that Red Hat that are vulnerable for Red Hat. <laughs>